to my calculations it's coming from outer space <gasps> a signal from another world wow the wow signal comes through they've got to chase it because something's trying to reach them it might be trying to teach them something they've got a new job to do they've got to face it the signal is clear coming in from past the stratosphere wow signal they got thinking this. Maybe it's aliens. I mean, the signal doesn't have to be coming from something like weird like a black hole. Hey! Like, we know a lot about black holes. So maybe it's not a weird rare space thing. Maybe it's just somebody trying to get our attention. Somebody like aliens? Maybe... Aliens? Aliens! I just said that like <laughs> three times, so... I mean, it's aliens! It's not a big deal, but I just... I did say that. Aliens are definitely out there, right, Lucia? They built the pyramids, right? I saw this episode of Real Ancient History where they go into amazing detail about all the ways no. they No, 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 no. People built the pyramids, Chris. What? Magic. Math. Oh, come on. Math is great. In fact, since you like aliens so much, did you know that there is an equation you can use to figure out how many might be in our galaxy? Really? Yeah. It's called the Drake Equation. Really? Yeah. It's the Drake Equation. You go to this website and then you have all these different factors that are all the things that go into whether there might be alien life out there. So you choose each one and you kind of give your best estimate and it gives you a good guess for the number of aliens. Cool. But how do we know if it's from our signal? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that is a lot more work. But um, I don't know, I'll see what I can do.
Good night, Chris. I love you. What? Good night, Lucianne. I love you. Meredith, we're co workers. Greetings, Earthling. You have been invited to an alien drum circle in another dimension. Whoa! Are you the ones who sent us that signal? Signal? No, not us. This is purely a feel-good jam session, and you are invited. Wait, I can understand you. You speak English? I have my translator on, fool. Now let's stop yapping and get ready to shred. Grab your drums and let's go! <gasps> Today's theme is travel. One, two, three, hit it! Harnessing the power of a neutron star, traveling to galaxies afar. In a machine navigating wormholes, we can go wherever with our super controls. I fly with ease, I am pulled, not rushed Behind a dense disc where I can't get crushed Condensed matter pancake is the best of ways To get to Alpha Centauri in 43 days I scan my body, every cell, every stratum Accounting for the quantum state of every atom I put that information in a single beam And I send it as a signal to the places I dream Well, I can drive around inside of my car It can only be on roads so I can't go far it's fueled by the juice of dinosaur bones Then it burns holes into our layer of ozone <laughs> So yeah, when I travel, I make pollution And yes, folks have thought of some pretty great solutions But many years have passed and we haven't made a change Now that I say it out loud, it sounds strange Okay, uh, well, that's it for our jam session Well, that was fun. When's the next one? Uh, we'll be in touch Yeah, don't call us. We'll call you Oh, was that real or was it just a dream? Wow, it really was real. I can't wait to tell Lucianne and Chris. Good night, aliens. What? <laughs> my pancakes. Ugh. Ugh. Come on! Hello? 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 How was your breakfast, Chris? Oh, thanks for asking. I, it was great. I warmed up a frozen burrito I found floating in some liquid nitrogen. Uh, it was a little past the expiration date, but I put a ton of Cholula on it, so it ended up... I'm talking about the pancakes. The... Pancakes? You might have seen a big stack of them rolling through the Adler on a tiny little car. Hmm. No, sorry. I definitely didn't see that. Uh, hey, my potato's ringing, so I gotta... Hello? Mary, you gotta help me. I took a bite of Lucien's pancakes, and... I mean, this is not my business, but didn't you also take a bite of their vegan pizza yesterday? That was never proven. And also, didn't we used to have like 75 pounds of trail mix in the Far Horizons lab, Chris? It's not cute, Chris. We live here now. We have to make this food last. Well... I don't even understand how you're doing it. Like, how did you get my sandwich earlier? Today? I don't remember a sandwich. Not just a sandwich, Chris. My favorite sandwich. Potato chips and ranch on rye bread. I promised you I did not eat that. You did, though. I took a bite, I set it back down for like a minute, and then when I picked it back up, there were two more bites gone. I didn't take those bites, Chris. What? 
Hang on, I'm getting another call. Hello? We need to talk about Chris. He is out of control. Okay, first of all, I'm still here. I can hear everything you're saying. I'm really sick of you guys putting me in the middle of And secondly, of maybe fights. we should talk about how unfair it is to leave snacks around if you don't intend Stop. to- Stop. Lucy and yell at us. Chris, I'm not gonna get mad, but I need you to tell me the truth. Did you take a bite of my pancakes? I, I might have. Oh, Chris, those pancakes weren't for eating. Those are condensed matter pancakes. I was using them for my alien space travel research. Kind of delicious, though. You don't understand. You shouldn't be alive right now. Wait, what? What do you mean? I mean, you shouldn't even have been able to bite that pancake. It should have crushed your face and your teeth and all your bones in your body into a fine powder. Oops. One bite weighs like 7,000 tons. It should have ripped through the bottom of your jaw and crashed to the ground and all the way to the center of the earth. Did you swallow it? Uh, I, uh... Tell me you didn't swallow it. I don't feel so good. Beer, a traditional yet elusive drink made from grains. Everyone knows that the science behind beer is beyond human capability. Who or what is responsible for these delicious adult beverages? Today, I'm talking to Jacob Houston, COO and head brewer at Empirical Brewery in Chicago. Perhaps he can answer some of the lingering questions the world has been harboring for years. I'm Stacy Quasar, and this is News at the Speed of Light. Jacob, it is an honor to be interviewing you today. Your achievements in Chicago's brewing industry are many, including becoming Empirical's head brewer less than a year after being hired and COO in less than two. After you led the company in a rebranding in 2018, Empirical won several awards for its revolutionary beers. Truly astounding. Now, Empirical's logo is based off of the ancient hieroglyph that represented the word beer in the cuneiform language. Naturally, my first question for you is, how do your current beer recipes differ from that of the original beer recipes shared with humans by ancient aliens? I think the, at this point we have established all of the ingredients um, with consistency. Uh, I feel like back in the day, they didn't have the consistency and they kind of just used the yeast in the air where they were. And now we kind of hone in that yeast and cultivate it ourselves uh, so we can make sure that it's consistent between batches. So intriguing and might I say, mystical. Question number two. It takes between two and six months to homebrew a beer before drinking it. Some species, however, may use a brewery hovering 124,000 kilometers above the black hole at the center of our galaxy, where it would actually take five years. Wow, that is a long time. Do you think those extraterrestrials would be patient enough to wait this long for a brewski? I would say yes. Uh, most extraterrestrials or humans like to be patient with their beer, um, assuming that the outcome is going to be extraordinary. A point of view I never would have thought of in all my years of life. Question number three. I understand you employ three cats to protect the premises from small creatures. If an extraterrestrial were to come and give them tasty treats in exchange for a cold one, do you think they would tell you? Uh, how well do you know your feline employees? I know the, the felines around here very well. Um, I take care of them on a daily basis, uh, and I do give them tasty treats when I can, but I think they enjoy these tasty treats better when other people come in. They tend to like that a lot. Now, Jacob, Somewhere out there, there is likely a planet made entirely of beer. If you were to discover that planet, what would you name it and why? Um, I've always been fond of Akronar, 
Uh, it is already one of the brightest stars in the sky, but I don't see why that name couldn't be used uh, for a planet as well. Um, just a huge fan of the name itself. Uh, sounds nerdy, sounds kind of like it's from the Star Wars world, and uh, in general, a uh, planet made of beer can't go wrong. <laughs> now you said Akronar? Akronar. Beautiful. Rolls right off the tongue. Jacob, last question. After a long, hard day brewing some delicious suds, you're tired and sleepy, and you're ready to go home. As you go to lock up, a flash of green light stops you in your tracks. Suddenly, you're face to face with a large extraterrestrial. They say to you, Hello, Earthling. I will pay top dollar for a bubbly adult beverage, but due to my anatomy, I need you to feed it to me using an eyedropper through a small hole behind my brain sack. The whole process should take about mm, three days. Do you agree to this strange yet momentous request, or would you rather get home to your coziest blankies, your comfies, and a good book? Well, I think uh, I could kill two birds with one stone and say yes to that and put one of my subordinates in charge of the feeding while I go home and sit comfortably on my couch. Divisive and yet terrifying. Jacob, thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed by me today. The things you have shared with me scare me and entice me at the same time. I cannot say that much in my two to three months of experience. I am so delighted. Well, come stop by Empirical Brewery anytime. A lot of fun releases to look forward to in the future, especially our new collaboration that will be coming out in December with the Adler Planetarium. It's gonna be a kettle sour. It's gonna be delicious. Whoa. Come check it out. You heard it here first, folks. Thank you, Jacob. That completes my interview with Jacob Houston of Empirical Brewery. Though he answered many of the oft-asked questions surrounding slops, gatter, and wallop, I find myself needing to know more. A door has been opened to a new set of mysteries that send a chill down my spine. I'm Stacy Quasar, and this has been News at the Speed of Light. find what you're looking for then why bother looking why bother anything and still we stay awake all night the telescopes eat up the light the tiniest traces of a microbe won't escape us 
It's never aliens until it is. Until these distant worlds give up themselves and their secrets. It always takes too long. That's just how it is. Because probably isn't good enough for me. Home with the tardigrades. Hey, Dad, I'm going over to Gina's. Hey there. Oh, whoa, 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 young tardigrade. Now, just a moment. Uh, what? What are you wearing? Um, clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think those can rightfully be called clothes. And you said you're just going to Gina's? Dressed like that? Oh, Dad, yeah, I already said. I'm going to Gina's and- You're not going to hang out with those... Those ruffians in the 7-Eleven parking lot again, are you? You know what I think about them. Ugh, Dad, they're not ruffians. They're just, you know, like, really extreme. Really? Extreme? <laughs> <laughs> like you kids know anything about being extreme. Oh, here we go. No, no, not here we go. You listen to me, young lady. When I was your age, we were hanging out with the tube worms at the bottom of the Indian Ocean. It was so hot and high pressure, I thought we were going to boil. But no, not your old extreme dad. Why, I remember this one time. Oh my God, stop. No, no, no. Look, this is your family history. Your legacy. You think you're going to be extreme by standing around dressed like that at the 7-Eleven dumpsters when your Uncle Reggie went to space? <sighs> you listen to me. He's a hero. A hero who knows the meaning of extreme. Oh, Uncle Reggie didn't even choose to go to space, Dad. Some venture capitalist stuffed him into a rocket at the last minute, and then it crashed on the moon and he died. You don't know that. We tardigrades survive everything. He could still be alive. Huh. And you're so extreme, huh? We live in Naperville. What kind of extreme guy moves to Naperville? It has good schools. I gave up my extreme life for you, young lady. Don't blame me. I'm not blaming you. I just want you to live up to your legacy. Uh, just let me live my life, Dad. Just because I'm going to the 7-Eleven tonight, it doesn't mean that I don't know how to be really extreme. I could go to the geysers, Yellowstone, or whatever in the future. Jeez. So you are going to the 7-Eleven. Busted! <laughs> Now, an interview with an alien. <laughs> oh, silly humans. Oh, hello there. I was just reading a book here, or as I believe you humans call it, breastfeeding? Hmm, I could be wrong about that, but I doubt it. You see, I'm an alien that hops from planet to planet, posing as its intelligent life for research. I've been living as a human on Earth here for the past three months now, and I gotta tell you, you're the easiest species to imitate. I've been studying the way you dress and act. 
the matter you ingest, and the way you communicate. You oh! dancing queen! <laughs> Thumbs up. You really are simple creatures, using your bipedal bodies to move about your planet's surface during the starlit half of its rotation, while regenerating in soft cloth wounds during the dark half. Come here, Kitty, I'd like to spread butter on you with my top feet. Good, good, good. Well, I only have a week left here, but my dissertation for the Galactic University is almost done. Through my research, I've determined that your greatest contribution to our intergalactic information banks is the chip clip. Why didn't I think of that? In my home world, our chips are all over our floors and we hate it. We don't have to have chippy feet anymore. There's a better way. Anyway, thank you for your hospitality. I'm going to get back to my breastfeeding now followed by some good old-fashioned microwaving. Mm. Goodbye for now, but remember, it's not really over until the fart lady sings. This concludes an interview with an alien. <laughs>and yours are vegan. I didn't forget. Uh, Chris? Chris? Huh? Wait, what? No, no, no. No, 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 no. Look, someone else did that. Look. See? Wait, why would I eat bites out of my own pancakes? Hello and good day, esteemed work associates and colleagues. On a day such as this, whoa... Oh, if my tummy didn't already have butterflies in it, I'd be jonesing for those delicious flapjacks. You want one? Chad, what's with the prepared remarks? Yeah, why are you so nervous, Chad? Oh, uh, it's a big day, y'all. I have someone here I want you to meet. Wait, did you let someone into the Adler, Chadler? Well, let's just say it wasn't a an identified flying object in the skies last night. It was actually... Cupid's arrow of love. And I know exactly where it landed. <laughs> That's cute, you met someone? And they are inside the building. It's moving kind of fast and they insisted they bring their whole family. Well, if they're the one. Right, and we totally vibe. Hey, did you hear that? Hear what? What's their sign, Chad? Yeah, they, they don't actually believe in, like, Earthling constellations, actually. That sounds like a Leo. Yeah, you know, like, me, I'm down. Like, I, I don't, like, see species. I hear it now. Or, like, planetary differences. Okay, they're definitely getting closer. To all life forms, this right here... It's a habitable zone. That's beautiful, Chad. Inside the science cave. Oh, that must be them. Let go. Get. Can I ask you something, Chad? Certainly. Do they give good hugs? Best. <laughs> oh, why is it moist? Why is it moist? <laughs> you look hot.